Good afternoon, everybody. Um, what we like to do in the next couple of minutes is share a bit of the learnings and everything that we kind of took away from our journey when trying to kind of bring wearables and assisted reality applications kind of to the shop floor. I'm happy to have Jay with me on stage here today. So we're giving us kind of talk jointly as a kind of a dialogue. And I think we just should kick it off, right, Jay? Yeah, and let's do it. maybe you just give us some sorts about what we can actually learn for from the consumer market, right? Yeah, actually, you know, Glass started as a consumer product. Uh, you know, right when you guys started working with us around 2012, we were working heavily on Glass as a consumer product. And uh, over time, I think we were early adopters of some of this uh, new human interface kind of stuff with, with speech and, and being able to, to make people work hands-free. And we're seeing that a lot now in these consumer products like the Google Home and Echo Dot. And I think it's a function of some of the technology that we have and how, how good natural language processes got, uh, processes have gotten uh, to the point where, in some use cases, these devices are actually better than humans to actually understand some of the language that we're doing. So I think that's, that's the kind of things that we've started to see that is making it really possible for these hands-free devices like Glass to be successful in the enterprise markets. Right. And I think for me especially, it's also, if you really think of this kind of why is it so important, it's tremendously successful, right? I was always asking myself, and it's actually the kind of the thing that is also important for the enterprise space, or even more important for the enterprise space. And that is that you really have this end-to-end -end solution, right? It's not just the front-end piece, it's not just the hardware piece like Google Home or something. It is really the end-to-end -end supply chain even that you have. And the same is actually true if you're looking into enterprise space and want to make something successful like assisted reality applications with glass. When you look at the criteria that will, you know, need to be met in order to be successful, then on the front end side, for example, you always see something that is, you know, it has to be low cost, it has to be easy to use, and there are even some contradictory things that you hear from customers, and that is kind of make it stylish, but low cost, right? And usually when you take stylish furniture, those usually come not for free, right? So it takes money and time, and the same kind of pattern also continues on the back end side of it. So obviously it has to be robust because it's, when it's, it's enterprise grade, it has to work all the time because it's deployed in mission critical processes. Uh, and yes, it has to be scalable, this is all known. But something like make it flexible and make it in a way that it is also self-serviceable so that I can do it myself and don't need um, the deep software expertise. This is again something contradictory and obviously also for user experience, right? We, we know the, you know, the, the, the smartphones and the user experience that we're getting and enterprises tend to also uh, want to see this with their application, the innovative applications here. And so that is really a challenging thing. I think on our journey, right, some of these criteria we knew before, but some were kind of unknown and we just discovered them as we were going on on our journey. And we didn't even know what the weight was kind of of these criteria, which were the most important things, right? But let's look a little bit more deeper into the journey between, you know, Ubimax and Glass. And maybe Jay, you speak a little bit of how sure. we kicked this off, right? Yeah, so Glass, in, uh, in around, I think it was 2012 when we started working together, right. and to tie back to some of the stuff that you just said, um, in terms of the hardware experience, we understood how to build good hardware. We didn't know how to build the back-end services that tie in with the stuff that goes on the shop floor and manufacturing environments. You guys brought that expertise, and that's why the partnerships really, really work well. Uh, and then also in these particular industries, knowing the user experience is really important, what people are actually able to do in those, in those skill sets. So, uh, I think that you guys learn that for the space that you're targeting really, really well. And so I think that started, that started uh, uh, you know, five years ago when we started working on the first generation of Glass and you guys took it to a handful of your partners like DHL. Uh, and then over time we, we started this program internally called the Enterprise Lighthouse Program, which you guys were the, one of the first, and started testing new versions of Glass internally. And we took a lot of feedback to the recent launch uh, from you, and I'll get to that in a, in a couple of slides. But you know, 
I want to know actually from you, how did, how did it work with, with partners and customers that you guys had? Uh, how did you guys onboard with Explorer? How did that change when we brought in the enterprise version? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question actually. I mean, how did this get started, right? I mean, with, when Explorer came out, there was really a huge hype around this technology and everybody obviously had immediately the impression, hey, this kind of tool uh, will also help me in enterprise space drive value kind of. But then as we went on, we discovered many, many different issues, right? You have to have a device that is really enterprise grade. And I mean, Explorer was kind of made for consumer in the beginning, right? And then we kind of took like DHL and other companies which are not that known in, uh, on a global scale, like Schnellica Logistics. Those were the very early customers that signed up for this Lighthouse program. And we took them really on our journey, right? We said in the beginning, okay, come on, let's do this. We don't know really where we're heading. Um, we will make it likely an iterative approach. And in, my, in the very first days, it was like, you know, not everything was working from the first day on, right? It was not working on the hardware side, everything, and it was not working on the software side, surprisingly. But it was good to have these kind of closed shop lighthouse program because we could constantly work and improve this, right? And, and as you see on that slide, we could drag in many more organizations and even more than are on the slide, right? And I think today we're at the point where when you look at this quote here from DHL, it is not something that is not real after this program, right? It is something that is kind of here to stay and is already generating tangible business benefits for enterprises. And I think this is what matters. The only thing that matters in enterprise space, right? And then the good thing is now, let's talk a little bit about the actual device, yeah. which you publicly launched on July 18th, which I highly appreciate. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, because that was my birthday, so I will never forget that launch date. But look at, let's look at uh, the device, Jay. Yeah. So I, you touched on something that was really important for us, that it was a closed program, right? So with taking a consumer product and putting an enterprise, we learned a lot, but you have to iterate a little bit here and there to make sure it works. and so. We spent a lot of time with you and our other partners working with, with you guys to get a lot of feedback on what works well, what didn't work well, what needs to change. And I think that, that Lighthouse program was really useful for us. And then in July, as you said, on your birthday, we gave you a nice little present uh, with, with this device, which was a lot of feedback from the, the enterprise space. So we changed the optics a little bit to be a little bit more efficient. Uh, we made the device foldable so you don't have to carry around a large, a large project, uh, a toolbox for that. You can actually just put it in your pocket. Uh, we made it possible to use safety shields and safety frames, uh, made the device water resistant, changed the connectors for the device uh, to make it actually easy for you to not get snagged on something. So it's a magnetic connector. So if something gets snagged, it just falls off. It doesn't pro uh, cause a safety issue. You don't end up falling down because something got caught. Um, we actually, the other, the other, that's from the hardware perspective, but from the software perspective, we tried to make it a little bit more flexible for the different use cases that you guys had. So we wanted to make sure that you guys had access to the camera, uh, manipulate the camera in different ways. Uh, we put a lot of effort into privacy and put a privacy sensor on this, on this device and a, a privacy indicator on the device. And then we made it uh, a little bit easier on the software side to integrate with cloud services as well and use machine learning and that kind of stuff. So that way the, the features that you want in, in your Ubermax platform, you can do that really quickly. Right, and uh, actually I think that from a software perspective, so speaking about our part of the, the journey kind of, by the end when we kind of launched this finally now, or you launched this finally, we were at the spot where we could really say we started off with, you know, more or less isolated um, applications serving, you know, for logistics problems or manufacturing challenges. We came out of this um, with the, the idea that you actually need a more integrated solution, right? Because yes, in the beginning, customers were starting obviously with one use case, but as they kind of advanced and learned what the capabilities of that technology are, they figured out, hey, Glass is actually more than just a tool that runs one application, it's actually a platform. Right, and so they actually wanted to have something that is really end-to-end, -end, so it's not just the application running on the glass, but it's also a back-end application, um, which is very important for them. 
right? And let's see a little bit, let's have a look at a short video um, of how they're using it today. So that gives you a little bit of a glimpse of especially also the variety of applications customer using glass together um, with Frontline. Okay, Glass. bunch of different application use cases that the customers are using already today and now the good news is really that with July 18th we can now really speak about this right before we needed to hold back always <laughs> we wanted to tell the world but we couldn't right due to various reasons confidentiality and everything yeah. okay. I think the biggest takeaway for me is that in that video and I, I'm seeing firsthand a, a handful of times is that it's really really easy to use right and that's not a function of just the hardware. It's actually predominantly a function of Frontline, that it's actually made for the use cases that they already know. So the workers there are already doing the same thing. They're not changing how they behave. They're just having a new tool to make it actually a lot faster, uh, a lot easier to do the work that they do. So I think that's a pretty big deal for, for the, the customers that you have. And then you're doing a lot of different things. So it's not just for this one environment. It's not just for one specific use case, but it's this whole end-to-end -end integration where you go and pick the stuff that you want, or you work on something, or you need help, and you can do that all in one uniform uh, experience. So I think it's really nice to see that, that actually from a, from a, from a customer's perspective. And we get a ton of feedback uh, that that's, that's something that you know, people like DHL and, uh, and Volkswagen really, really do like. Right, and, and actually, to be honest, to me also, the ease of using has also a lot to do with the device, right? Because give you one example, um, you know, the, the new glass device has a touchpad on the side, right? And it goes from the very beginning of the, of the body, kind of, to the very end of it, right? And before, I said, okay, this is, this is nice. You, you did it like this, but okay, uh, do we actually need this? And what we found actually is, people tend to use even this very familiar swipe gestures, right? They tend to use the swipe gestures in the very beginning of the, of the device, kind of, not in the rear part, which was the case with the Explorer edition, Yeah, right? yeah we so, actually learned a lot that, you know, depending on the shape of your hand, you use the front or the back. Right. If, you have, if you have longer, narrower fingers, you're more likely to use the whole uh, length of the device, which is kind of backwards, you would think. If you have thicker fingers, you use the front. So it's really important for us to be flexible from that perspective. Right, and the other things are really kind of, as I said already, actually those devices are becoming more platform, so you really need this integration piece of it, um, not having it stand alone with one application, but seamlessly transitioning kind of over to another use case, right? Not an application, another thing that you need to do. And again, what we found is really this self-service thing, right? We, we completely underestimated that need, um, that the customers are really requiring this when they want to deploy at scale. Not for the proof of concepts, but we are far beyond that stage. And that is also why we yesterday actually announced a tool that helps on providing these self-service capabilities within Frontline. And this is actually now, you know, continuing the journey of what we learned in the, in the Lighthouse program that customers really need this, what we call on top of our platform, Frontline Creator. It's really now a self-service tour, right? You can create your um, assisted reality applications, but you can actually also compose the different workflows that are getting executed 
by the smart glasses, right? And you can modify them kind of in an ad hoc mode and also style and structure the interaction, whether it's gonna be with voice, gestures, if the environment changes, you change the interaction, but you change it. Not the implementation provider or something changes it, and that is kind of a necessity on the shop floor at scale, right? Because IT can't always be around when something happens. They need to quickly adapt this. And I think that is what we've learned, and I think we're still continuing that journey, right? It's not the end, it's definitely continuing. It's just the beginning, yeah. Just the beginning. So, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much.